Hi, this is Laura Powers, and I'm doing the first of our online TV show for Healing Powers. And I want to introduce our first speaker today, which is Naomi Hori. She is an intuitive reader and a healer, and is based locally here in Lafayette, Colorado, but travels really all over the world doing workshops and readings and healings for people. Um, I've gone to Naomi many times and have been really impressed with uh, her reading and healing abilities, and so I asked her to be on the show today to talk about uh, energy, grounding, and just energy work in general. Thank you very much for having me on your show, Laura. It's an honor. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, um, I, um, I thought uh, it'd be nice to just start out talking about what energy is. Energy basically affects um, whatever we're doing, um, whether we're at work, at home, our health. Uh, it's all related. Um, you know, a lot of times we can shift the energy um, it, just by, for example, being cheerful to someone mm -hmm. and they might uh, be in a horrible mood and then you can be your happy self and then suddenly they're in a happy mood the workplace is in a happy mood, everything starts to shift. Um, and I think one uh, great thing about energy is the more that we're tuned into own, our own energy, the more we can manifest and the more we can hold our own vibration and shift things around us in the world. And, um, and of course things will happen that are difficult or whatever, but as long as we stay in our vibration, we can move through anything much more easily. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about just you know, energy and how a person's energy, for example, might not match what they're thinking or, or what they want, because I think I've been really fascinated the more I've learned about energy about that. Yes. Um, well, a lot of times um, we might, uh, for example, have certain feelings in our heart, and, and it's interesting because we may not be aware of, of it, but we may present our energy in a much different way because they're sensing what's in their core, in their heart, in their spirit, but mm. they might be wearing layers and layers and layers of energy, um, mm. maybe some layers that they set up to protect themselves, and, and then they might be walking around with a kind of, stay away from me, don't hurt me, leave me alone, uh, and then they might be thinking, gosh, I just really want to connect with somebody, <laughs> why isn't this happening? Um, so it's good to um, just sit and 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 release any energy that's not really in alliance with what we really want inside. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. That's been aligned with my experience. Um, what are some of the main energy tools that, that you would recommend, especially for a beginner? Um, for a beginner, um, I think the most important thing is to really sit and be with yourself. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, people may meditate, but uh, even during meditation, their energy might be going outwards. Um, so if they can just sit and first make time and space to just have quiet time, even 10, 15 minutes a day, and just sit in silence and be with themselves, no TV, no radio, nothing, uh, no computer, no games, whatever distractions are going on, and just really have that time to connect with themselves. Um, and another thing they can do is uh, to ground, uh, mm. so they can imagine using a grounding cord um, going from near the base of the tailbone deep into the center of the earth. Imagine making that grounding cord as wide as your hips and just letting it anchor you firmly um, both from the base of your tailbone as well as into the center of the earth and just let it drain out any energy that's not yours. And then also it's important every time you release energy to fill that space up with your own energy and whatever you like. Okay. And uh, when you fill up that space, um, I've, I've read something about why that's important, but can you talk about why it's important to fill up the space that you've just emptied of negative things? Um, yes, if you leave a space open, uh, then it tends to collect with something. <laughs> so it might as well be with your own energy and, and what you want. Uh, for example, someone that has a super cluttered house, um, you know, if they if they move stuff out but don't sort of designate that space for what they want, even if it's for the absence of stuff, then it tends to, uh, clutter tends to reaccumulate there. Oh, okay, fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and how often do you recommend for people to do this grounding exercise? Um, 
I would recommend uh, in the beginning at least every day, uh, at least 10-15 minutes, um, but you can do it whenever you want. You can't, um, you can't overdo it uh, and, and you can use that tool too um, whenever you're feeling a little um, overwhelmed or confused or spacey or whatever. Just sit and take a moment and really ground and get in your body, get in your power and, and that really helps um, make everything go smoothly. Okay, great. So that's, I think, the first tool that I, was, I know was really instrumental for me was um, grounding just in terms of helping move my life in the direction that I want. And what other tools do you recommend? Um, well, some other tools are um, that you can also use uh, roses sort of as boundary roses mm -hmm. um, and just to delineate the spaces. And what you do is you can imagine a rose in front of you, a rose behind you, a rose to all sides, above you, below you, whatever. Um, and whenever you, you're in a meeting with someone or just out in public, um, instead of letting your body, your aura layers that surround the body um, get ab absorb um, other foreign energies, you can let that rose uh, absorb it and then when it gets full you can just imagine dissipating it, blowing it up, whatever, and then create a brand new one and to collect energy. And that's a really useful tool. And it also helps you be more aware and conscious of what's your energy and what's not, because sometimes we're just so used to um, to bringing on energies, absorbing energies. And for those of us that are very psychic, very, very clairsentient, um, we don't even know what's ours or what's not. You know, mm. we're so used to just feeling everything that's in the environment, especially when you're extremely sensitive and stuff. So uh, that's a great tool to begin to look at the consciousness with that. And you can use uh, those roses in different ways too. For example, um, when I'm, before I make a phone call or before I check my email on the computer, mm -hmm. I'll put a rose between me and the phone or a rose between me and the computer. Okay. Yeah.